haunted by memories from his deployment. It's like it's forever burnt in your heart and your mind. His drinking destroying his marriage. Alcohol made him a really mean man. How the desperate prayers of his mother are answered. All this and more on today's 700 Club Interactive. Hi and welcome to the show, I'm Andrew Knox. And I'm Ashley Key. Here's Ephraim Graham with this week's Top 5 from Studio 5. At number 5. I'm down three coaches, but I do think I have a solution for cross country. No. Bible teacher Priscilla Shire returns to the big screen. I think some people will only come to really know God and know who Jesus is through testimony. They may never read a book that a Bible scholar writes. They may never sit down and do a Bible study. They may never walk through the doors of a church, but they will hear your story. So the more we're willing to share our stories, not just on screen, but in our interpersonal relationships, the more opportunity we have to sort of roll out the red carpet for people to be intrigued. The town's oldest manufacturing plant is closing its doors. Her latest story is the Kendrick Brothers film, Overcomer, in theaters August 23rd. Here's a Studio 5 sneak peek. Hey, are you here for cross country? Yes, sir. I had one girl show up and she's got asthma. Oh, you mean Hannah Scott. Do you enjoy running? It's really the only thing I'm good at. Why have a season with one runner? One runner matters. You give some very inspirational speeches to your players about stepping up under pressure and going the extra mile. Anna, getting faster. Number four, get a grip. Yes, chef. chef. This feisty and famous chef is taking on uncharted territory to take his food game to the next level. Chef Gordon Ramsay is traveling the world right now looking for adventure and new flavors. On his new show, Uncharted, he explains that even as a world-famous chef, there are some things he can't get fresh. So to say, taste a certain mango from Peru, you're gonna have to go there. They're not making, growing 10,000 a month. They're not fast-tracking that. It's, that's it, there's 24 of them and that's it. Uncharted airs Sunday nights on National Geographic. At number three. You are going to wait until you're 18, young lady. Baby Grace from the classic television series Little House on the Prairie is all grown up. So you're Baby Grace from Little House on the Prairie. How does it feel? Well, I guess we're kind of used to it. It's been and Wendy Lou Lee but... is now an author. Her book, A Prairie Devotional, is out this week. And that's never been done with Little House before. So many people have told stories about Little House, but they have ignored the faith element of Little House on the Prairie. And how can you ignore it? It's in every episode. At number two, it's another quick look at an uplifting film. This one, <laughs> definitely this one. The Art of Racing in the Rain tells the story of an aspiring race car driver played by Milo Ventimiglia. Through marriage, a baby, scary times, and sad times, the one constant in his life is his devoted dog, Enzo. I feel a duty to represent the good fathers out there, to represent the good husbands out there, uh, to represent the good friends to their canine companions. All I knew was I was meant to be his dog. The Art of Racing in the Rain is in American Theaters Friday, August 9th with a familiar voice as the dog, Enzo. We understand they're the best friend, and so we can find language that, that kind of a, becomes a best friend. Denny was clearly taken with her grooming. She probably bathed every day for all I knew. Number one. By the time I was 16, I had the attention of the NFL. Don't move! But I was accused of something I didn't do. The system doesn't care about me. But you didn't deserve what happened to you. I got clean. Brian Banks signed with the Atlanta Falcons back in April of 2013. The linebacker's football career, though, is short, and his journey long, filled with twists, turns, and a wrongful conviction. I was 16 the day my life changed for the worst. 16 when I became a product of the penal system. Banks is now executive producer of the major motion picture in American theaters Friday telling his story with actor Aldis Hodge in the leading role and Sherry Shepard in the role of his mom. Can you imagine what it's like seeing that child, that innocent child taken from you and locked away with men who've done real crimes and can do real harm to him? All the mother 
ever wants is to protect her children. Wow, the Brian Banks movie looks very powerful. In fact, yeah. I've been waiting for it to come out because my two really? sons have been telling me, Dad, as soon as that movie comes out, we're going to go see it. Yeah, they're wow. very interested. It, it looks, looks great. It looks really powerful, and definitely. I, I got to see Overcomer already. Okay. And uh, it is an awesome movie. Yeah, it's I've really heard. good. What is your favorite? Like, what was your favorite part? The I don't want to spoil yeah, don't, it. Don't of course, spoil it. But the, the just about the end of the movie is very yeah. powerful, mm. and um, it's just you know. It's hard not to cry during the scene, but it's yeah. so motivating and inspirational and a lot of drama, a lot of humor in it. It's really, really good. Yeah. And uh, I highly recommend it for families. Mm -hmm. um, my entire family was very, very engaged in it. It's a great film. Yeah, I love Priscilla. Anyth oh, anything great. with her. She's I'm just become like, quite yes. the actress. I know, that's awesome. She can do a little preaching too, as you A little know. preaching, a little acting. God uses it all. I love and it. And I was quite impressed as we were seeing the clip of the uh, Art of Racing film yes. with the dog. You oh my pretty quickly recognized the voice of the puppy, which was rather impressive on your part. Yes, I know. I'm excited to see the movie. I mean, I feel like any movie with a dog. Dog and just car racing. Just hugs yes. at your oh, heartstrings, and I'm super excited to see. Are you a dog person? Of course, yeah. We have yes. a four-year-old uh, hound named Charlie. Oh, Charles, when she's Charles. in trouble. That's awesome. Do you have a dog? I do. I do. She's a little brew fruit dog. She's a multi. -poo. What's the name? Bella. Oh, nice. Very she's nice. beautiful. You know. A lot of but good yeah. movies out there. I know. I'm excited. Well, for more, check out Ephraim's weekly show, Studio 5. You can watch it on the CBN News Channel or online at cbncom studio 5 well, this next story is super sweet. Um, a Wilmington woman only wanted one thing for her 90th birthday, to be handcuffed and put in the back of a patrol car. Yeah, that one caught me by surprise a little bit. The birthday wish there to be handcuffed. Yeah. A little bit unusual, isn't it? Well, a local news station, WWAY, made it happen. And they got it on camera. Oh, it's been on my bucket list to ride in the back of a police car hand handcuffed. So here I am. Dorothy Maloney says she could never imagine crossing this item off her bucket list. I had a um, uh, incident in New Jersey where we were hit by another car and we had to get to a doctor. And the policeman said, I'll put you in the back of the car. And I said, oh, it's been on my bucket list. But Maloney's daughter-in-law, Lisa, says she was determined to make it all happen for Dorothy's 90th birthday. That's all she wanted in life was to write, you know, was like, let's make this happen. Lisa joined the Wilmington, North Carolina Friends Facebook group asking for community help, and it worked. New Hanover County Sheriff's Office Deputy J.G. McDonald was able to make Dorothy's wish come true. I couldn't imagine. I thought, why is he here? Dorothy says this is one ride she will never forget. My hands, you know, they'll get bruised a little bit, but otherwise I can't get out of them. I know that. Oh, look at that. Oh. Quite the escape artist. 90 yeah. years old. That's hard to believe. She that's looks great. Good thing she didn't want to be tased. I, wonder, be I another... wonder what it is about her that she had that uh, that birthday wish. It's interesting. Yeah. Do you have a bucket list? Uh, it, it didn't. I've already gone through that. So I'm good. <laughs> How about you? Um, I can't say that that's on my bucket no, list. I was no. never actually handcuffed in the back that's of the police car. But uh, happy birthday. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, switching gears up next, a Marine returns home from the combat zone with a textbook case of PTSD. You're wondering what the guy out there is doing right now. You can't not just think that way. It doesn't just go away. It's just like it's forever burnt in your heart and your mind. We find out how this vet won the battle against the enemy within. Amazing story when we come back. After two tours of duty, once to Afghanistan, once to Iraq, Jeremy McMillan returned home, and the memories of the war followed him back to the States. And for years, Jeremy refused to say he had a problem, even as his issues drove away his family and nearly drove him to an early grave. Following the attacks of 9-11, over two million U.S. troops would be deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan in the war on terror. Jeremy McMillan was one of them. You've prepared for this the best that you can. You either learn or, or, or you die. The Marine served two tours on the front lines. Each time, he came home safely to his wife Danielle and daughter Alyssa, thankful for the training that kept him alive. You're taught that you are 
the most fierce weapon on the battlefield, which is true because of the mentality. Your mind can make your body do so many things. But no amount of training could prepare him for the battle to come. Months after coming home from his second tour, Jeremy still couldn't escape the horrific memories of war. You're not sleeping. You're wondering what the guy out there is doing right now. And you're hearing the air go over, and you're hearing the bombs drop. You're hearing the vehicles and the tanks leave, and you're hearing people come in with the casualties. You can't not just think that way. It doesn't just go away. It's just like it's forever burnt in your heart and your mind. He went on to become an infantry instructor at Camp Lejeune. By now, he was drinking heavily, and paranoia was beginning to set in. I had noticed he scared easier. He was very jumpy. I turned on the light, and he went to jump to find his gun. That was really, really hard on me. I couldn't go upstairs with people behind me. I didn't like having my eyes closed in the shower where I didn't know what was around me. From there, it only got worse, as even the smallest things sent him into a fit of rage. Alcohol made him a really mean man. I didn't want to be around it anymore. Often, Danielle took their daughter and stayed with family in Georgia. He would, you know, say, I'm sorry, and, you know, I'm, I will do better, and then things would be good, and then they'd just go right back. It was really a roller coaster. Because I was never wrong. And as long as you're not wrong, you can just keep going with whatever it is that you're doing, you know? The one person Jeremy did reach out to was his mom, Sue, a Christian who always took him to church when he was young. When he would be telling me about hard times and how he felt at the time, then I would remind him that Jesus came to give us abundant life. When God would give me a Bible verse, I would send it to him, anything to help encourage him. But as he'd done for years, Jeremy still refused to admit he had a problem, even after he was denied re-enlistment in 2009 because of being overweight. I didn't want to change. I had convinced myself that people were against me, and the bar life is where I belong. You know, this is where I need to be. I had an excuse probably for everything. After the Marines, he started working as a government contractor. Then one day in 2012, he ended up in the ER with severe chest pains. But it wasn't a heart attack. It was a panic attack. You probably have a bad case of PTSD. I was like, no, I don't. I don't have that. I was in denial, and I put blame everywhere but myself. So as long as you can keep that game going, then you don't have a problem. But with the panic attacks coming more frequently and his family looking like another casualty, Jeremy began to realize he needed help. I wanted to change my life. I wanted to turn things around. I wanted to start over. No, you're not. You know, if you, if, if you think you're going to somehow the next day you're going to quit, you're not going to quit. It owns you. Then in 2016, a year after being legally separated, Danielle filed for divorce. It was going to be the hardest decision I ever had to make was to divorce him. I remember just feeling extremely worthless, hopeless. There was nothing that I could do. Even then, Jeremy's mom refused to give up on her son. I spent a lot of time praying and fasting for him. And God revealed to me and said, I will heal him. So when Jeremy went home for Christmas that year, his mom convinced him to go to a church healing service. I don't even think I've made it two days without drinking at that point. Maybe this could be what turns it around. There, Jeremy and his mom went up to the pastor for prayer. He asked me if I was saved, and I said no. And he, he said, did I want to be healed? Yeah. I had to look down. I couldn't even look at him. And, uh, you know, do I believe in Jesus Christ? I said, yes, I believe in Jesus Christ. And do I want him in my heart? I said, yeah. And he's like, well, you have to ask him in your heart, you know? And when he was praying for me, it's when, you know, it was like I was like another person. Jeremy says immediately he lost all desire for alcohol and was delivered from his paranoia and PTSD. It's Christ. It's all divine. I knew that that very moment I was free. You can't explain the weight that just comes off you. So whatever that was, was gone. 
Now putting their focus on God, Jeremy and Danielle rebuilt their marriage. He now runs a barbecue business and still works with the Marine Corps as a contractor. I think we were doomed if God had not come into our lives. I mean, it would have been done. We would have been done. I don't see this life the same anymore. I turned to God before I turned to man. He has made me new. I have faith in that. Wow, the power of God to change a life, the power of Jesus Christ, the compassion and the love and the forgiveness, grace and mercy Christ has for us to transform our mind as we become someone in relationship with God through the work of the cross. You may feel a tension today after watching that piece. Pay attention to that, that tension of the Holy Spirit drawing you closer and closer to Jesus. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He testifies and witnesses about the truth of Jesus Christ. And today, you may feel a tension as the Holy Spirit is drawing you out of your current lifestyle, out of your current doubts, and he calls you today. You know, in Revelation 3.20, Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. And he's knocking today. Whoever hears my voice, he says, must answer the door so I can come in. Jesus will not force himself on you. He asks for you to open the door to relationship with him. And as we're in relationship with Jesus, he has this amazing way of transforming our thought process, taking our sin problem when we surrender. For Jeremy, it took finally saying, I've got a problem. I must surrender my life, my soul, and my sin problem to Jesus. That's that process of Jesus standing at the door and knocking. Jesus is still alive and moving and working today. You know, when he was on the cross, he said, it is finished. It is finished. He didn't say, I am finished. Jesus is still active and moving today. But it is finished. The penalty for sin paid by Jesus for you and for me. What we need to do is say, this free gift of salvation, I need to accept. Yes, it's hard to comprehend sometimes that Jesus, in a way, makes it so easy for us because he did all the work on the cross, but it takes surrender on our part, and then it takes walking and following Jesus from that point on and saying, I give my life to you, now teach me how to live. If you've got that restlessness and that tension in your soul today, maybe you've got an addiction that you're struggling with, you're in bondage to something, just like Jeremy was. Today is the day to say, Jesus, I need you in my life and I need to turn this over to you. Would you pray with me now? Lord Jesus, I hear Jeremy's story. I feel the tension in my very own soul because you know my addiction and my bondage and what I'm carrying. And I'm hearing today your voice asking me to surrender my sin problem and my very soul to you, Jesus. And I stop now. I stop living for myself. I stop trying to fix the problem myself. I stop trying to earn my way to heaven myself. And I'm at the foot of the cross and I say, Jesus, this free gift of salvation. Jesus, your desire to take my sin problem from me. I take you at your word today, Jesus. I take you at your word. And not only do I take you as my Lord and Savior, I confess my sin to you and my addiction and bondage I put at the foot of the cross and I ask you, Jesus, to take it from me. Take these chains from me as I live for you in Jesus' name. And Father God, I pray your Holy Spirit, who is calling people into relationship with Christ today during this program. Now, Lord God, I pray your Holy Spirit is faithful to his word and he will light the path and guide the steps of the children he adores. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed with me, I urge you to call us at 800-700-7000 and tell someone you just prayed a prayer of salvation, you just prayed for your bondage to be broken. We would love to celebrate with you and pray further. 800-700-7000. Ashley. Amen. Well, coming up, painful bone spurs leaves one mom struggling with every step. Like if I wanted to take Izzy for a walk somewhere, my youngest daughter, I couldn't do that. And I used to have to hold onto my bed and onto my dresser to get off the bed. And it was so painful. See how this woman got back on her feet when we return.
As the mother of six children, Virginia Bruno is a busy woman, but two years ago, she was sidelined with bone spurs in her foot. She spent her time hopping and hobbling along and crying out in pain with every step. No matter what she did, she couldn't find relief. That is until she heard a word from for her on this program. The summer of 2017, we were uh, doing a lot of um, activities outside, my family and I. I began to um, develop this um, ache in my foot. I had a foot spur, was what the doctor had said. I couldn't um, go playing outside. I couldn't go for a walk, like if I wanted to take Izzy for a walk somewhere, my youngest daughter, I couldn't do that. I even couldn't even go into the mall without um, you know, using a cart to, um, to lean on. And I used to have to hold onto my bed and onto my dresser to get off the bed. And it was so painful, like it was extremely painful. That I just almost cried sometimes because it was so painful. I was in desperate need and the Lord knew it. I started to pray and ask God, you know, take the pain away. So I'm laying on my couch and I'm in much pain. I was watching the 700 Club. I don't miss the 700 Club. It's an awesome show. <laughs> They're just about to pray. And I said, oh Lord, let them say something about feet. At that moment, I think it was Wendy, she says, Yeah, God is touching feet right now. If you've got anything going on with your feet, just put your hands right there. Uh, God is healing you. I was like, what? That is mine. I claim that is mine. And I just said, thank you, Jesus. And I thought, okay, I'm just going to believe you for that, right? So, um, and then the next day when I got off the bed and did not have to hang on to anything to get out of bed, I was so happy. My foot was able to bend and I was able to do things that I couldn't do with my foot before. I am so thankful, so thankful. He is, he is so awesome to us, like my whole entire family. He um, has shown himself so faithful over the years. When you pray for something and you pray to him, he stands by his word to perform it, the Bible says, and he will do it. You just have to believe it, amen. Amen. What she said, you have to believe it. Believe and receive God's healing for you. Whatever your need is today, Andrew and I are going to pray. And what I want you to do is I want you to lift your hands out to receive your healing, your blessing, whatever that is. Or you can put your hand on whatever area that you are in pain right now. So join with us in prayer. And before we do, here's a little bit of an encouragement for you. It says, by Jesus Christ's stripes, we are healed because he took the whipping. He took the torture. We are healed. How amazing is that? That's proof that there is a loving God and he wants you to be healed. So just receive it today. So join with us in prayer. Father God, I just thank you so much for every woman and man watching this program right now, God. Jesus, I thank you so much for what you did, for what you did when you were here on this earth, what you did on the cross. Thank you for the resurrection power that lives inside of anyone who believes in you. We lift up the needs of the audience today, God, and we just say, touch, Holy Spirit, touch. We pray for healing in the name of Jesus. And I just, I believe that someone is watching who has abdominal pains, whether it's gallbladder issues, abdominal issues, you're in pain right now, just touch that area of your stomach, of your body, receive that healing in the name of Jesus. Believe it and receive it right now in Jesus' name. Oh, and Father, we just think of in scripture when blind Bartimaeus mm -hmm. heard Jesus was passing by and cried out, have mercy on me. And so many are watching now saying, Jesus, have mercy. You know my struggle, you know my pain, have mercy. Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? Mm. Yeah. And Father, we don't come before you with a wish list asking you to check the box. We come before you in our pain and our struggle and our heartache. And we ask you to give us the strength we need as we endure, as we fight the good fight. Yes. Yeah. Someone out there saying, I'm just giving up, I'm done. This is, this is the last day for me, I am finished. And the Holy Spirit says, no, I adore you and I love you. Be strong and courageous. 
Do not be dismayed, for I am your God, the Holy Spirit says. Father, we thank you. Your call is never finished. You always desire relationship with us. Thank you, Father, for the healing that you're bringing to our audience members, emotional, spiritual, physical, everything, God. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. and amen. amen. If you'd like further prayer, please give us a call, 800-700-7000. We love to pray for you here, and it's our privilege and honor to do that. We leave you with Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. A great scripture to remember remember why we're here. And Ashley, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. It's been thanks. a great show. Thanks for having me. And we'll see you next time on 700 Club Interactive. Thanks for joining us.